Thank you very much for your patience. I'm Masahiro Miwa. I am not that good and let look to speak as the other speakers that we heard yesterday and today, so let me read a text. Uh, following the wonderful presentations that we have heard yesterday and uh, today, uh, it is indeed a, a great pleasure and honour to be given this opportunity uh, to uh, join them as one of the speakers. I would like to pay my due respect to the organiser and to all of the speakers. And my topic is New Religious Music, the Potential of the Arts in Electricity Civilization. In relation to the topic that I will address today, I once said the following in a lecture I gave in 2011 under the title The Impossibility of Algorithmic Composition. I quote, According to our current knowledge of life sciences, our ancestors should derive from some microorganisms floating in the shallows of the primordial ocean. But as much as we accept it as knowledge in our heads, it is impossible to appreciate it with our senses. On the other hand, the image of the blue planet Earth sent to us via satellites is indeed the God's eye view which human beings dreamed of having, and the planet filled with water due to some miraculous coincidence is not a product of fantasy. All sorts of knowledge gained by human beings through modern and contemporary science and technology has easily surpassed the senses of human beings. As a result, we must fundamentally abandon the notion that a religious god who created the universe exists and even if we don't go back as far as the microorganisms, I must accept the rational possibility that I simply might not be here today if by chance my direct ancestors died out after some generations. Is it, however, possible to even think about oneself who might not exist here and now? End of quote. There is no mistake in saying that if you wish to know the essence of something, you need to identify its origins. As a composer, I have been continuing to seek for the origins of music, and as such, I feel myself to be a close friend of today's scientists who have been researching the origins of human beings through biological science. My pursuit with music, however, is different from studies on music history or musicology. It is deeply tied to inquiring about the origin of I, who for sure exists here and now. Uh, by the way, I mean I, the subject, in the philosophical sense, which I will differentiate uh, from Miwa, that is I, the speaker. Each person experiences art, music in a separate and unique way and assigns different values to the experience which cannot be generalized. This is definitely because it depends on the mystery or uncertainty as to where I, the subject, come from. Where do I, the subject, come from? Is sexual reproduction and cell division the answer? No. I, the subject, is not asking about that process. I, the subject, live in this world, which combines limited matters existing in space and make sexual production and cell division possible. I am asking where this I comes from. In human history, people at all times and places continue to hold this simple question or uncertainty in mind and sought their answers in various forms of religion. This question has always been directed to some kind of a religious god or to ancestors. The quest was accompanied at all times by specific songs, dances, paintings, and other forms of human activities based on their faith, which in modern days have come to be called art. 
In other words, the origin of art, music, is clearly a part of these religious activities of human beings, and I would even go further to state that they define it. But today, in this modern society in which God is dead, borrowing from Nietzsche, or where Lyotard's grand narrative has broken into pieces, if we were to respond to the mystery or certainty that human beings feel, there are only two possible attitudes to be taken. One is to invent an unknown God, which only I, the subject, can be persuaded of, and to believe in him, however irrational that may be. Another is the attitude to keep such a mystery to oneself, pretending that it never existed. The Japanese society in which I, the speaker, lives is about to choose the latter with great enthusiasm. That attitude, however, could never be an answer, and is like an act of terrorism which destroys the mystery or uncertainty held in secret by all human beings. I, the subject, would never be saved. Or, to put it another way, if such a choice would, could be made, I, the subject, would fall apart. I, the speaker, therefore considered the former attitude. For example, many Japanese people do not follow any specific religion, but they would visit Shinto shrines in the New Year, vow their love in Christian style weddings, and follow the Buddhist traditions when they die. People with true faith might think of them as having no principles who appear to be victims of commercialism. But the fact that such religions are relied upon at important events of people's lives, and the fact that even in today's world, Japanese people think that it is a natural thing to do and ask no questions about it, is a fact worthwhile noting. This means that I, the subject for all individuals, is definitely in need of religion. Such a craving for faith cannot be replaced by something else. But at the same time, it seems less important for Japanese people as to which religion it is. It does not have to be any existing religion, it could be just an unknown god、uh, only for that particular I, the subject. It might just be performing a good luck ritual or reciting some magic words that everyone knows. This unknown God that is devoid of officially recognized authority or doctrines that come with existing religions, or to put it another way, the religious mind that people are not even aware of, might sound ridiculous. But I, the speaker, think that it is deeply rooted in the mystery of where I, the subject, come from. Freud said, Childhood no longer exists. The mystery surrounding where I, the subject, come from is also a central topic of psychoanalysis. Of course, Freud was an atheist, and to him, religion was yet another form of transference or an illusion. But in any case, he tried to elucidate its inevitability and the mental mechanism behind it. Here, it was the language which played a decisive role. When infants acquire language, they become part of the symbolic world, and I, the subject, is born. The birth is of a different, this birth is of a different dimension from biological birth. Jung would have said, the religious gods of humanity were created by the inner holiness embraced by I, the subject, who lives in the world of languages. In any case, ever since the human brain was taken over by the language, everyone maintains a religious mind as a destiny for human beings that live with languages. Or, as a neuroscientist Damasio says, it is inevitable for the human brain that develops the autobiographical self. Such a mental mechanism sometimes acts like God towards I, the subject, also in cases not limiting to cults, and with such an overwhelming reality that I, the subject, may be coerced to fight holy wars or to commit even a murder.
This is suggested by various cases of mental illness. Where did I, the subject, come from? Even though it remains a mystery, the religious mind makes it inevitable to invent the unknown God. Knowing that it is irrational, I, the subject, can continue to exist without going mad because of this religious mind which is indispensable for human beings to be what they are. And now I, the speaker, think that music needs to become an activity that brings together the broken pieces of I, the subject, to one place in a given time in order to share that mystery, handling it uh, with great care. In other words, it is something like the past ritual and ceremony. For I, the speaker, living in this present world, music is reciting of the magic words based on the call from the inner religious mind. Or with some exaggeration, it is nothing but a ritual of religious offering to the unknown God. In the past, music was a part of rituals, and my wish has always been to compose music for rituals. Church music was a part of ritual until the time of Renaissance or Baroque, in the context of history of Western music. After that time of Renaissance or Baroque, in composing music, human emotion and sensitivity of composers became more important factors than rituals. In the old time, for composers, it was more important to serve the church than to compose music. Their job was to compose church music to express the contents of the Bible and to use cantus farmers of Gregorian chant for the purpose of prayer. Feelings and emotions of composers as an individual didn't matter at all. And in my opinion, this is how composers should be. But in today's world, there is nothing that we composers absolutely have to follow. There is no today's equivalent of Bibles or Cantus Farmers. Something that composers absolutely have to follow. It shouldn't be arbitrarily preference or individual composer. It should be something very robust and reliable, which is comparable to old days religion or teachings. For me, the only thing which deserves to follow is logic or mathematics. We are living being surrounded by digital technology, which is based on modern logic. And through those technologies, we've come to believe massive amount of time and space which are beyond the ability of human imagination to grasp. Logic and mathematics are abstract, and that's why it's the only thing we have, to, we have to help us understand all things in the universe and their origin which were created by the God. I, the speaker, composed the structure of the music in the form of algorithm. This is my way of creating lyric using formal language rather than free-form language. These lyrics are logically perfect, in other words, bug-free. These lyrics are mounted on computers as computer programs and become reality only when they are played by computers at one particular place and time. The sound there is determined by the algorithm I created, and the result of the algorithm is played as religious offering. Or in other words, my lyrics are read aloud. This is what composing music means to me. And the fact that music is a religious offering is applied not only to my way of composing. It applies to every form of art, not only to the music before the time of Baroque, but also to Beethoven's piano sonata or Nogaku theater. It's always true that players offer the music or the play to the god, and the audience is just witnessing what is offered to the god.
The piece by the piano I'm introducing to you. There are sets of 16 notes which change their pitch based on the predetermined rules. The generated pitch is fed back to the following set of 16 notes, which then change their pitch, again following the rule. There is no chance or whim to play a role here. So if you start from the same initial value, how the music develops will be always the same. But in math, in this kind of system called discrete dynamics, whatever the initial value, the tone row will eventually attract it to a class called attractor and eventually come to a state of endless loop. When the program detects this kind of endless loop state, it moves one note based on a rule to change the dynamic trajectory. This happens at the very moment the piano player claps his hands while he plays the piano. Those are 16 notes. It's difficult to see, but these are 16 notes. This is the program that I created. By changing one note, it develops into new different music. With this clapping of the hands, new music starts. It's just like a gene mutation caused by cosmic radiation to break through the stagnant state of a species. I may be feeling this way because of the presentations in the morning. Now I'd like to show you the superhuman performance by Hiroki Oi, which was recorded last month. It takes 30 minutes.
One thing I want to add, uh, Mr. Oi, the player of the piano, is graduated from Kyoto University. Music is about ritual of offering. As it is a ritual, there is always a prayer. In every kind of religion, there is always the act of chanting of the Bibles and sacred texts. Gregorian chants and chanting of Buddhist sutra by monks can be the origin of music. Chanting of sacred texts. This suggests that voice is not just a tool for communication or expression. This suggests that it has some fundamental meaning to it associated deeply with the origin of the subject. Just reading sacred texts may help you to understand the text, but it's not enough to offer a prayer. Together with Mr. Noriyasu Sakonda, we have long thought about voice through activities as formant brothers. Our focus has been to create voice without an owner. It's about creating artificial voice to sing and speak using modern time technology. Voice always has its owner. Voice is intangible, but it's a sound to suggest the existence of the owner. If we create an artificial voice, what is I, the subject, hearing? What's very important here is that the artificial voice played should, should not be something recorded in the past. The voice should be generated here and now. Because if it's a recorded voice, it doesn't mean that someone is chanting here and now. I think this is true not to, uh, only to songs, but also to any kind of music. Based on this philosophy, we format brothers have never used sampling technologies and instead used good and old technology called formant synthesis. Using formant synthesis technology, we have developed speech system using real-time control. Today, I can't talk about the history of what we have tried, but I'd like to show you the culmination of our efforts. It's a duet by a person and a machine singing a religious song, Starbat Mata, composed by Pajel Pajelezi, sopranist Reishu Sakai, and a pianist Uzi Okano will sing this song using accordion. Every information from the accordion, for example, information about the buttons and keys pressed and air pressure of the accordion are sent to the computer. And by controlling the format voice, a synthesizing engine that we developed, voice is produced from the speaker. As you can imagine, this is not just about playing the melody. Nuances, breath, and Latin lyrics are all controlled at the same time. This is an extremely difficult performance, and as of today, it's only Okano-san in the world who can perform this. Lastly, I want to ask you one simple question. When a person offers a prayer by singing through a machine, is it a real play prayer? And is it really true that there is no owner to the voice created by the machine? Of course, we all know that there is no owner to the voice, but for I, the subject, is the voice really same as sound of an instrument? Our activities as four-month brothers gives us a different viewpoint in thinking of music as a prayer. And it's also a way to explore the relationship between machines and I, the subject.
Within my lifetime, people say that in the near future, artificial intelligence will surpass the human intelligence. When that happens, can I, the subject, remain the same? Or should I, the subject, remain the same in the first place? That's the question music and art have to answer. Now I'd like to introduce the music. <laughs> 